Hello everyone. This is a lecture for Chapter 7 Futures and Options on Foreign Exchange. This chapter explains about futures and option contract of the foreign exchange market, which is very critical for international finance. So let's look at future contracts first. So what is the futures contract? Futures contract is like the fourth contract and the fourth basically fourth contract is the one that you set the some 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 price for the future so you set a price for the future and you promise to deliver foreign currencies by uh, for this price a certain date so there is a maturity date so delivery date actually not the maturity date and its promises so it, the fourth contract is bilateral contract so you can find the counterpart that has some needs buy or sell the fourth contract and you can make bilateral contract but futures is a more structural contract so it's like for contract basically specify that certain currency will be exchanged with another one for another one at a specific time to so deliver delivery date and for future price the difference between the foreign and future contract is Futures are standardized pattern like contract. So forward, there's no standard standards, but futures, this is standardized and trade on organized uh, official exchanges uh, with daily resettlement through the clearinghouse. So they basically, uh, the clearinghouse resettle daily basis and you can get kinds of uh safety you know and the more convenience because the fourth contract you need to find your counterpart directly and you should worry about the breaking the promises basically uh, but futures contract the clearing house exchanges guarantee the payment resettlement every the rules you know So what is the standardizing feature? Basically, uh, in your futures contract, there's a contract sign and delivery dates are uh, delivery months are so it's a standardized. And there's initial performance bond. So every uh, investor in, in the exchange, including house, has its own account. So you have your own account. Yeah, I mean, I have my account if, if I invest and I have to put certain amount of money, formerly called margin. Now we call it initial performance bonds. It must be deposited into the collateral. So it's collateral uh, accounts to establish the futures position. So if you want to set a future position, you have to pay this. It is about the 2% of contract value. You can pay cash or T bills. So who is the exchanges? Like the, the CME group is formerly Chicago Merchandise Exchanges. So it's yes, the CME. It's the largest currency future market in the world. So in Chicago, there's a big market there. Um, the Singapore exchange is pretty uh, large too. Uh, there are other markets, but none of them are close to CME or CMAX. So since Singapore exchange trading volume. So th these are two biggest currency futures market. Exploratory cycle, March, June, September, December, so every th three months, right? The delivery date is the third Wednesday of delivery month. So the third Wednesday of delivery month in March, June, September, December will be delivery date. The last trading day is the second business day preceding the delivery date. Okay. And this is the size of the futures contract. Um, 
you can you can just see that. So the exchanges settle daily basis. It means that based on the value changes, like the the price changes, your account changes too. So unlike forward, the futures contract is settled up or marked to market. So market price reflect directly daily basis as settlement price. So what is the settlement price? Settlement price is the close price. The close price is the price when it is the, the, the market closed, so a certain time, right? It's a close prior of daily trading on the exchange. It is determined by the settlement committee for the commodity. So based on the settlement price, the account value changes based on your position. You may have long position, which is buy position, or you may have short position, which is sell position. It's a zero sum game. So if you have long position on one currency and the value of currency increases, then your account increases. If you have short position of certain currencies and the currency depreciated, then you make money. And to get safety nets, there is a maintenance performance bond, roughly 90% of the initial performance bond. If the account falls below this, then additional funds should be deposited up to the initial point, not just to the maintenance point. So if this is very typical, typical futures contract, not just you know, these foreign exchanges, but also like any other futures contract. So this is example. Consider you have long position in a CME, British pound futures contract. It is written on 62,500 pounds, and the price is quoted in dollars and cents per pounds out to the four decimal points, okay? The minimum price increment is 0.0001 per British pounds because we have four decimal points, right? It's basically uh, corresponds 6.25 per dollar per contract, right? And then we went long the futures contract a price of dollar thirty cents per pound. At the initial aid of the contract, the long post initial performance fund of 1,625. So that's set by whom? Set by CME Group. And the maintenance performance bond is 1,300. So that's also set by exchanges. Now, if you have long position, then <clears throat> if you lose money, how much? $325, because you, you initial contract, like the initial bond is 1,625, maintenance bond is 1,300, the difference 325 will be the amount of money that you can actually lose before margin call rings. If you, the settlement price falls below this, then you get margin calls. So see what happened. Each day, losses are subtracted from investors' count. Obviously, gains are added to, to the account. In this example, the initiation of the, the, the long post initial performance fund is 1,625, and the maintenance level is 1,300. If the invest lose more than 325 again, then the investor should make a decision, can maintain long position, say only buy additional funds up to 325, uh, the initial performance bond. And if he fails to do so, his position will be closed out with an offset and short position. So over the three days, the pound strengthens then depreciation in dollar terms. So day one, the settle is 1.3010, which means that you make $62.50 because the, the, the pounds was 1.3000. And actually the pounds appreciate, right? So to how much? 0 
zero one dollar. So zero, your size of the contract is sixty two thousand five hundred pounds. So the difference zero point zero zero one dollar times six two thousand five hundred, which is sixty two dollars and fifty cents, will be the gain. So your account balance increase by this much, and by the end of the first day, then you have $1,687.50. Now, second day, it actually depreciated. So you lose money because you are, you, you are in the long position. So decrease to $1.2980. So pounds depreciated. You lose money by the amount of the, these differences. So yesterday, 1.301. Today, 1.298, so these differences times, again, the size is 2,500 pounds. Then you lose $187.50. So your account become 1,500 because uh, your previous day account balance $1,687.50 minus your loss is $187.50, then you have $1,500. Now, Third day, it declined even more. So 1.2948, which means you lose values by $200 because uh, now this decline, the amount of depreciation times the size of the contract, again, 62,500. So $200 losses, you count 1,300. So on the third day, we receive a margin call. You have to put more money up to the initial performance bond because you have lost $325. So that's how it works. Every day you have your account posted daily basis by daily settlement price. If you're long position, if your currency depreciated, then you lose money. If you short position, if you currency depreciate, you make money. Account balance changes daily basis. If you lose more than the uh, the difference between the initial performance bonds and the maintenance performance bonds, then you get margin call. You have two choices. You can add the 325 to keep the long position, or you can just close up. So. At the end of the DC adventure, we have three ways to computing gains and losses. First, we can sum up daily gains and losses. So $62.50 first, $187.50 and $187 second, and the two hundred third, third right? And then second, contract size times the difference between initial contract price and last sale Monday. That's another one. So the 325 is the last third day price for pounds. And then the first day, the initial day actually, times 62,500 size, we would think the 325. And finally, you can actually just the ending balance minus beginning balance on the count. And it's just for deposit or withdrawal, because uh, you can deposit or withdraw during the day, then you can have same, same uh, general losses, you know. So these cases, there's no deposit or withdrawals, only 1300 minus the ending balance, a uh, beginning balance, I'm sorry, 16, 1625, so you lose. $325. Okay, so that's the end of the part one, which is the futures contract of um, foreign exchange. Now next part, we'll see the option contract.